right, here we go. Back with row number four. I'm going to make a massive calculation here and roughly spit, spit, spit. Well, there you go. That's just great. Okay, get serious. All right, make a mark. That's roughly splitting what's left into two parts. I found my little metal ruler, and you can tell it's all gunky, so this is, it was put up the last time I cleaned. Um, I came up with a couple of real rough ideas, and I think I'm going to go with this zentangly doodly one right now, um, just because it's so different than these other angular ones. And... I'll probably finish it off with this triangular one just for grins and see what comes out. So, here we go, guys. Let's see if we can draw this. I'm just going to make circles. This stuff is so cool. So I'm marking on it with a pencil, and it's not leaving pencil marks, it just kind of scores, it just kind of leaves a white. Alright. Let's put one right here and leave it a little bit off center. Okay, now I want the big one to come up. And twist over and this is just a little like so and I'm gonna make another little curly cue like so I'm gonna bring oops I didn't make enough room there so okay we're gonna go this way and we're gonna do another little flower thing here and a doinky. I love doinkies and I think we've got room to come we're making up our own pattern here and a couple that Just to have dots. Yeah, I think that'll do it for me. Now remember why I don't like that light all the way over there. Let's see if I can. Yeah, that's better. Okay. Turn her down. Tool up. And I'm also finding that um, this number one speedball tool is has become my go-to, probably because I'm enjoying these uh, tight little patterns. Yeah, you can still see it. So first thing I'm going to do is make my straight line right here and there we go isn't that just the coolest thing ever okay out of the way and then we'll come back this way and come back on it clean that off and I'm gonna pick up this you know what? If I didn't have that line there, I could... Okay, I'm going to move this line over just a little bit. Now, hold my beer and watch this stuff. That's not the real word, but... I don't want to offend anybody. Um, did it do... Let's start down here. Remember, we're turning 
the turntable and not our hand to make a curve. I'm shifting back up on the handle a little bit. I was having trouble feeling my groove. I'm not not a technical term there, but groovy, baby. It wasn't feeling very comfortable. So choke back up on the end of that. And I guess it. Uh, I guess in essence, what it's doing is making me carve at a lower angle. I think I'll leave that. I can hold down on it. More like this than like that. I never have the music off in my studio. Come on, back it up. Um, it's always on. It's the first thing I turn on and the last thing I turn off. Except I did a video one time and just... I didn't realize that I had my typical music going in the background, whatever's loaded onto my iPod. It can be anything from modern opera to country to alternative rock. It's whatever comes up. And if it is annoying or it grates on my last nerve, then I just get up and punch it forward. But this particular day, I don't even know what was playing. I posted the video on YouTube and got a copyright infringement. The Their software had identified the music that was playing on my entertainment music and assumed that I was using copyright stuff for background music. So I decided the easiest way to handle that is just turn it off. It gets awfully quiet in here. Okay, because I'm going to ignore that black line, I can bring this little baby out more. About like that. And then we'll carve it better than a vertical circle. Whoops. It's more of an oval. Who cares? Here's one. Let's do a little bit smaller one here. Well, it turned out about the same, didn't it? Okay. wonder why it's easier going that way. I think I'll leave that little divot there in the middle. That's kind of cute. Okay, now I'm going to try to get the smallest one I can get. Alright, so that's as small as we can get. Then we're going to have to go a little bit larger here if we want graduated circles. Okay. Now... That balance looks a little bit better. Let's carve our big one. Let's see, now wait a minute. I want this one, let's see, if this one's on top, I want this one to be on top here, so I'm going to cut this one. Like that. I want these to overlap. That means this one will go under.
and under. And that one goes over and under. Just look at that. So easy even boys can do it. Boy, this turntable makes this easier. Alright, now this one is... I've got three of the flowers. So we're going to turn that into a flower. Maybe. So it starts out with an oval. That worked out pretty good. I like it. Now this one is an oval partially behind the first one. And then each one of those, whoop, back up a little bit. Each one of those turns just a little bit smaller. And then a little bitty one on top, maybe. Yeah, that worked. And a little curry cue on the top. Nah, I'll just look at that, isn't that cute? Looks like a little pig's tail. Okay. My light is causing a glare. See, I'm thinking about you guys. Maybe that's better. Puts me in the dark a little bit, but I figured out. Okay, here comes my oval. I'm gonna go this way. I'm gonna turn my wheel counterclockwise. I seem to get a better cut that way. Too bad. That one needs just a little more of a cut. Doinky. Okay. Alrighty. One more. See, I said I was going to go counterclockwise, so. Counterclockwise that way. Okay. You know, I know lots of people that are off work this week. So they get to play and do the things that I get to do every day. Thank you, retirement. Although, when the bills are due, I wish I wasn't. But that's another story. Okay. 
comes another little curly cue. I think I like it. I think it's cute. I'm going to put, for the sake of simplicity, just another straight line here. If I can get it going straight. So it's a slightly curvy straight line. Looks organic, don't you think? Alright. I think I'm really ready to finish this off, so I'm going to do another, let's see, I'm going to do one right here, I'm making this up as I go along, and what's happened here is that Wiki's gotten bored, so she wants to be done with this plate, but slow down just a little bit on your cutting, no point in ruining it at this stage of the game, this will be a more of a solid line. Not quite an eighth of an inch thick in reality. A little bit more than a sixteenth. And I'm going to leave the trash in it and call that one done. Alright. Now... I'm going to mark the center. And I want those to be... Okay. I want these to be taller triangles than these, which they're going to be because this row is a little bit wider. Let's draw us another center right there. Go ahead and connect them. Now, let's see, a quarter inch. Now, let's go three-eighths. I like that. Okay, so that would make this seven-five. Aren't you smart? Okay, so roughly be right there. <laughs> Woody Woodpecker. Oops. Oh well. Didn't come out even, but. How about that, sports fans? Good enough for who it's for. That's what my dad always said when he was doing all the finished carpentry work on the house that we built. Good enough for who it's for, and then he'd snicker and walk off. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do is carve my outline. Kind of a straight line with a curve. Got another dreary day here in Arkansas. We had thunderstorms last night with thunder. And it thundered big time. Now I see something happening here, and I don't know if any of y'all are gonna see it or not. 
is that my teepees are wider in the middle than they are on the sides. I wish I could say I planned that, but you sat here and saw me do it, and I didn't plan anything. Oopsie. Now I've been asked what I'm going to use this plate for, and other than saying the I don't know that y'all have come to expect, I don't know. Um, no, seriously, I proved last week that I could print just one row by just applying ink to that one row. You can see it here. And I did that with Crayola colored markers. I don't know if those are waterproof or not. Well, my dinghy, they dried permanent. Um, this is a glossy paper, a 32 pound glossy paper. It's really kind of a nice look and it takes that, takes this type of a dye really, really well. Dye plate carving, whatever you want to call it. Alright, now I'm going to... Carve to the middle. And carve to the middle. And then I'm going to take this middle section out. Okay, now I'm going to, let's see, carve wider at the bottom than at the top. So I'm going to go like that, and I'm going to go like that. And if you were doing this or plotting it in a computer to have a perfect line drawing, this shape here would be the mirror image of that one. But since I'm doing this freehand, mine won't exactly match, but it's okay. And if anybody's not heard of Zentangle, Z-E-N-T-A-N-G-L-E. It's not doodling. It's an organized drawing with a micron pen. And this is a little bit of where shapes go under and over each other. Um, I've studied it, have the pens, have tried it. It hadn't stuck with me though. I keep thinking that it's going to be one of those things I can do from my chair when I'm watching TV, but right now I'm busy doing online classes, so that's what I do when I'm not sitting in this chair. cool pattern. I like that a lot. Now do we want to stop or do we want to just go on and add something else? I had so much fun with those spirals. Here we go loop-de-loop. -loop. And these, I'm going to take the opposite direction, just because I can. 
I have a strong math leaning in my left brain. That's where computer skills and things that matchy matchy live. So um, I have to watch myself or I try to make everything perfect and match and be mathematically and geometrically correct. I think you'd really have trouble doing this without the term table. Cool. This one might need just a little more. There. I'll call this one Snakes in the Cornfield. I could do horizontal lines. I could mimic straight lines going like that. Nothing I'm going to do. I'm just going to do a simple straight line that radiates from here. It mimics the pattern going on on the top, but it's different. Repetition with variation. Remember that. So if you're doing circles, do all kinds of circles. Neat ones, fat ones, skinny ones, big ones and little ones. Now, yeah. that's cool. Okay, doke. Um, let's get another sheet of paper. Now, get a clean piece. Come on. Here's one. This is um, just plain bond paper. The other one was from my uh, uh, collage sheets. And I'm going to be working those up, cutting the eyes out, putting them on different things. Just for whimsy and fun. These are all eyes that I've painted in portraits over the years. Pretty cool, huh? Can you believe that is a painting? And that's my eyes. Where are my eyes again? I guess that's the only one of my eyes. Alright. I think I'll just leave the turntable there. That's pretty good. It's going to take too long. Y'all don't want to wait on that. Like I've given you a choice on any of the rest of it. Alright. Cut it out. I just wanted a wide point marker. This is a Crayola Pipsqueak. And I had a comment last week that... Uh, I think it was from Sylvia Tabor on Google+, Plus, who said that Tim Holtz recommends water-based makers if you blow on it, huff on it, like huffing and puffing and blowing your house down that will reactivate that ink from a water-based marker. And I also know that using a briar and some acrylic paint to roll over this 
will work too if it's not too thick and sticks in the grooves. You don't want that to happen. All right, huff. Like you're going to clean your glasses off. Handy dandy baron. All right, let's see if we got anything. That's interesting. But you know what? I like it better on the glossy paper. And that has something on the back of it. Interesting. Hang on, I'll, I'm going to go get some glossy paper. Okay, I dried this page. Actually, I thought I had the camera on and I didn't. Um, it was really wet, so I wanted to save the ink. And when I put heat on this paper, the wettest places, like through here, where it puddled, actually did a pillow embossing and raised sections of that paper. Interesting thing is, on the back it raised it too, so that paper separated inside and made those interesting marks. If you use this it w and wanted to keep that effect you'd have to make sure it was one of your last papers. But I like the way the glimmer spray looks. See I could have wiped all that off and lost that. And that is usable. Now that I have that camera on I'm going to turn it off and create another piece of glossy paper. Be right back. Alrighty I'm back. I'm going to use the Adirondack Oregano now. One of these days, for me and for you, if anybody's watching, and if you're not, hey, subscribe to my channel because I'm having fun with this, and I intend to keep doing it. This ink pad is feeling not very inky. All right. Let's see what we get. Well, we learned that ink sprays don't work real good with stamps. But I got something I can use. Okay, Baron, Baron, Baron. Who's got the Baron? Whoops. Wow. And that's my whole plate printed all at once. There you go. I didn't get some ink good in some places. I really think that a brayer with um, regular acrylic paint would cover better. And you can see the strokes, the directional strokes where I was smearing the pad. But other than that, that's kind of cute. I didn't pick up that pattern well. I could go back in and trim that just a little bit. Alrighty, there you have it, sports fans. Artists everywhere. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and go to actually, A-X-U-L-L-Y dot com. That is Wiki Ozark Speak for Actually, I think I'll have the gin and tonic. So, actually is part of my everyday language, and so I just spelled it the way I say it, and there you have it. Bye.